Throughout the ages, there have been heroes and warriors who've embarked on quests to save faraway lands and free the people from would-be conquerors. Today, legends are told from the tales of our terrible warriors. Chronicles of an unlikely group of nerdy adventurers armed only with their dice, some pretty stupid ideas, and a horseshoe up their butt as they come together to save the day in The Cambridge Chronicles. Seriously? You couldn't find anyone better? Welcome back to the Cambridge Chronicles. I am one of your many players this afternoon, Mike the Birdman Dog from ThisWeekInGeek.net. And I am joined with, on my left... Which way is your left? Okay, that's me. Mr. Christopher. You're not high yet, my friend. <laughs> no, no indeed. But yes, we are joined here on the Summer of One Shots. This is our second episode, or third episode? This will be the third Yes, just because we've been recording a lot today, so keeping track of it's things. It's the second hour of adventure. Exactly. And, and for those, basically, to give it a little more context, we have the Marvel preview came first. Yes. Then, then, But because Marvel has been a bitch to try to record because of heat and people, <laughs> it will come after <laughs> this one shot that we put together, or I put together fairly quickly, to have something to put out. <laughs> exactly. So you people have something to enjoy as you enjoy this barbecue season, poolside. If you're listening to this podcast by the poolside, I really question what you're doing with your life. But uh, I still appreciate it. But it, oh yeah, we, man, you we are still weird. Appreciate it. Man, this this yeah. summer has been so hot. I felt like Jabba the Hutt the entire time. Yeah, it's like rock, rock, and cheesy, melty, and ballsy. Uh, I have legitimately considered moving to none of it at one point this summer. Just actually, just to be colder. Warning right now, if you can believe that. that. That's not okay. Okay, so all the way. Okay, we'll go Antarctica because the Arctic Circle is not actually land there; just a bunch of snow, and that's probably not going to last forever. So Antarctica, Antarctica it is. Yeah, Antarctica right. it is. There's oh, penguins. Exactly, penguins and puffins and all that. And stuff. they might not even look at you funny for moving there anymore. <laughs> no, they're like, oh yeah, I mean, I get it, I get it. But yes, we are joined with our storyteller, Alex's first time, and he's just completed his first hour. We're into Be hour gentle, two. it's my first time. Oh, oh boy, God. we will. <laughs> we haven't did, we haven't rode the plot railroad too hard, and we've kind of thrown some curves at him so far, and he's doing really good. So We haven't managed to derail the Great Canadian Railroad. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Give it time. I'm sure I'll swallow dynamite at some point. Anyway. <laughs> Trans-Canada Highway. Let's I don't know, there's some puns in there. Let's get going with this historical, alternate history historical adventure of World War I. And uh, where do we find ourselves? Well, last episode, uh, you were just about to go from the residential dormitory area of this Delta factory, uh, which seemed oddly vacant of people. Very sterile. and Yes. Uh, to the worker side, to where you go, it just says... Work this way, basically. Uh, work and you this were, way. Yes, Sorry. you were about to go in there, <laughs> and we went dun dun dun. And so now we're we're picking up where that left off. All right. So I guess we'll proceed into the work area as quietly as possible. Nonchalant. Now, you would expect it to be like large factories with lot like yeah. I'm picturing booming rooms as my expectations, yeah. full of people and workers and but loud instead, noises and heat. What you find is more like the dormitories, only instead of the dorms, it says above each room, it just says, you know, lab one, lab two, lab three, lab four. Now, the doors have like little windows on the outside of it, but you can't, it doesn't appear to be able to, any way to get it. It has a key entry, which is a new thing you probably had never seen before, but it has sort of like a key entry safe lock to get mm. into each room. Oh, like... Like those push button things. Yeah, like right? a key, like those like those keypads, but it's more mechanical because it's, it's older. It's more yeah. like like you're not going to hear like an uh, electronic beep. It'll just be like click, 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 and it opens or it doesn't. Okay, that's cool. So you can see inside of them though. I'm going to take a peek in the lab number one. Let's just start at the beginning. Yep, left or right. Uh, both sides of the of the room have the or both sides of the hallway have the exact same. Okay, so layout. John takes one side. I'll take the other. All right, so Mike, your character looks into a room, and it's just it looks like an interrogation room with a table and a chair, but nobody's in there, just empty. Okay, I'm gonna signal using military hand signs at uh, at Jack. Weird. Say, 
I'm trying to think what I want to signal. Just weird. Okay. Okay. What do I see in mine? You see a similar setup, only you see a skeleton sitting in a chair. And it's been there a while. So it, it looks like, like flesh was burnt off. Well, that's Ugh. disturbing. Uh, I'm going to signal back weird, and I don't know if there's a signal for dead body. Really fucked up. <laughs> dead tango, maybe? Okay. So you see above the doors, there's you know a little red light you know, for each room. And uh, you see on the wall, the far end of the room, a sign that says, uh, red light means in use. So you see one red light down the hall on. All right. I want to, I want to keep checking each room as we go, just peeking in to see if there's anything unique. The rest look, they all look pretty empty. Okay. All right, we'll head towards the one that's in use and be as quiet and stealthy as possible. I'll leave that to you to peek into this one, Mr. Sneaky, Mr. Quick. Yeah. Okay, so you look in, and you see a worker sitting down. He has a janitor's uniform on, and it has just says janitor on it. Same as yours, same name tag. Uh, mm-hmm. And he just has three plates in front of him. With donuts. How many donuts? Just one donut on one each. One donut on each. Okay. And he he looks to be, he's just sitting there, and he has a piece of paper in front of him, and it just says, eat donut A. And he's just eating donut A. That's it. That's all he's doing. Should we keep watching him? Yeah, we'll keep watching until anything weird happens. I'm going to... Okay. Is, is there any other, like, exits and doorways? Nope. It's any just, other sounds? Nope. You, you don't hear any sounds. You go, okay. You then see him grab Donut B, because next she says, eat Donut B. He starts eating Donut B, and immediately his skin bubbles up. Jesus. Uh-oh. And he starts to froth in the mouth, and he's going... Argh. And you see him getting angrier and angrier and madder and madder and crazier and crazier. And then he just starts banging his head as hard as he can on the table till you see blood come out of his ears and he passes out. You then hear... Shit. You then hear an audible... Not an alarm, it's just hear... Rear, 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 rear. It's sort of an odd sound. Just four... Four tones. And you start hearing, you hear a door open down at the end of the hallway. Can, are we visible from that door? Uh, you will be if somebody, when somebody does eventually come through. But the way the hallway is set up, it's a cross. So. So we, there are corners. There, there, is, there is a corridor you can go around. Okay, we'll. Let's go around yeah, said let's, corridor. Let's hide. Let's, let's <laughs> hightail it over around. Okay, so what you see is. Walking out is a man in a black suit, smoking a cigarette, and behind him come two people in the, uh, they're in the scientist uniforms, but they have gas masks on. You know, surprisingly, they think that's all, that's all that they need, the gas mask, and that they're not in like a hazmat suit because that didn't really exist. Uh, so, and they go in. You see them go into the room with, with the uh, janitor, I say in quotes. Mm-hmm. Former janitor. Former janitor. <laughs> and all you hear is double tap. Bang, bang. You see them load him up onto a gurney. And as they swing him out, bring him out into the hallway, the man with the cigarette just says, hmm, 20 seconds. And they walk out, close the door behind them. Hmm. Well, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> What's your next move? <sighs> I'm trying to think here what we can do. Well, we can't go in guns blazing. No, that's can we sure. try to, to get to follow them from a pretty far distance and go through the door and see what's on the other side? Well, we're supposed to gather any... information here, right? Yep, you are. Is that room open? Yes. 
They didn't take anything else out. I was the back into the room with the donuts. I want to take the donut that he ate, use the tip of my pistol, yep. and tip it into my hat and seal the hat. Okay. Might as well bring back a sample. There's a donut C too. You should probably grab that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. So you're so you're taking donut B, which is what the one he ate and then went crazy. Yeah, and we'll take donut C as donut. just in case. Yeah. So where are we putting donut C? We'll just put them both in the thing. Cause okay. Honestly, I was gonna say, please, I wanna... don't, don't go. I wonder if C's fine. And just take it <laughs> no, no, but I want to stab through. I'm gonna take my my trench knife and kind of stab through donut C to pick it up and put it in there. So. Now my yeah, my knife has it. donut C all over it, just just as a, as a it's, point. By the way, it's strawberry filling in that one. Sweet <laughs> strawberry <Wicked>. knife. <laughs> okay, so we will take these uh, materials, and I think we should leave because we don't know. We have no idea of enemy numbers. We, yeah, have we should no wait for a while. Like, probably come on, wait. come on back at a better time. Exactly, because honestly, right now we don't know what they're doing. So we will actually. I want to make a very quick stop through the barracks. Okay. And grab a pillowcase. And seal my hat and the donuts in a pillowcase. Do you want to do that? You want to basically sack it up like a hobo? Yeah. Okay. Donut hobos. Donut hobo. <laughs> donut hobo. <laughs> hobo donuts. That's fine. Hobo nut. No. And then we will GTFO off the property. You're getting off the property. Yeah. You go to leave. And you're going to have your first encounter. Oh, boy. As you go to leave, the security officer comes out because when you came in, you drove in through the front gates, right? Well, they're closed, and there is a security officer. Basically, it's the guy that lifts the... The, the, arm, the gate The, arm, the, the, arm, gate, person. the gate, keep, gate person. You know, there is no Dana only Zool. <laughs> <laughs> the gatekeeper, or even uh, the key master. Yeah, so he... But he's more armed. He goes... He just yells out, where are you going? Oh, we're uh, new arrivals. We haven't been assigned yet. He raises his rifle and says, you don't leave here. We don't oh. know what we're doing here, so where are we supposed to and go? He's back inside. Wait till you're called for work. How about you lower the rifle there, boy? Not happening. And he goes and no, fires a warning shot. I don't much like people threatening me. Fires a warning shot. It goes past your heads, but you know he. Say, I'm pretty quick. I could snap shot him with my pistol. He's yeah. already heard. <laughs> this is already a firefight. Because you are in. You're in the shit now. Now you got to roll for initiative. All right. Rolling one d six. I got a six. I got a four. I'll roll my my pink die. One. He goes last. <laughs> <laughs> How far away is he, roughly? Uh, about twenty feet or so. You like not not really far. Like you could, you could in D and D terms, he could close that distance in one. Round. I was going to say that that's a lunging sprint, and you're at the guy. Yeah, you know, that's that's it's considered close. It's probably too close for a sniper rifle. Oh, that's why I'm pulling my pistol. I'm popping him in the fucking coconut. <laughs> Yeah, so my idea is I'm just gonna lunge at him and grab his gun arm and just like wrench it up so he can't shoot so, again. So you're in your first? Yes. Alright, so uh roll for it. I'd probably be a strength in hand to hand. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Come on. That's a two plus three plus one, that's six. So you got a six on there. So his defense is six, so he ties go doesn't to the quite defender. work. Ties go to the defender. So no. <laughs> right. So you you go you went you said you went to try yeah, to grab. I'm him. trying to like wrestle him and kind of wrench his. He, his he, arm li off. he literally chest kicks you to the ground. Ow! Because he's wearing military boots and just he huffs you down. Sparta kick. All right, I no damage, but Sparta kick shot. Yeah, yeah, not not in a good position, but I'm not like hurt. Yeah, I, I'm gonna reach inside my jacket, pull out my Mauser, and uh, have it set the single shot. And okay. I am going to pop him in the face. You're, you're going to headshot? Yep. All right. So for you to do that, uh, I'm, adding a, I'm adding a challenge on there. Uh, you're going to have to get a eight or better. Or better than eight, sorry. 
Nope. Nope. Two. Nope. <laughs> nope. Plus plus your Two plus three plus oh one. plus three, so that's five. Plus your your. If you shooting. allow me to use long distance, I'll allow you to use your. No, actually, I can't use it on that. No. no. Say no. So no. So because he's wearing a helmet. So yeah. So basically, you fire, and it's not even enough to ding into the helmet. It's just you graze the side of it, and he's like, "Motherfucker!" Like next time, I won't miss. No. Okay, so you, you try to cover your ass and <laughs> yep. try, try to intimidate? Yep. And he's just like, motherfucker. <laughs> when do these homeless ever try to fight back? So there's a little secret there. It's basically the homeless they've been taking. All right. To give jobs, right? Now it's his go. Shit. It's his go. <laughs> so. Not a bad position. <laughs> he's going he's to take his rifle and shoot you <laughs> as best he can. So I'm going to have to roll. Now, he's aiming for center mass because he's yeah. not... Yeah, he's not a sharpshooter. No. So... He's got... This is clever. I tried to resolve this via diplomacy. I tried. What's your uh, What's your defense? Six. So... He rolls a six. Ties so, go to the defender. Ties go to the defender. So he uh-huh. misses. <laughs> this, this is just... No, let's try it. The combo of nothing or combat of nothing happens. You can, you can tell happens. that he works the gate for a reason. <laughs> the gun's mostly ornamental. Kick him okay, in the so balls. Top of the combat round. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm on the ground right beside him now. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You could try to stab me like right in the groin. Yeah. Uh, or in his yeah. leg. Or like right at like or like yeah like in the the femoral artery or something. Yeah. Face off this motherfucker. I'm just gonna try to wallop him right in the nutsack. With my that boot, works. with my boot. It's trying to be non-lethal here as much as possible. I like to beat people, not necessarily yeah. kill them. Yeah. Whoops. Kind of forgot about this that. This guy really. just might be a gatekeeper here, so I'm gonna try to kick him as hard as I can in the nuts. That's uh, six. My strength is three, so that's nine. Is this really Jesus. hand hands more foot to nuts? It works. <laughs> so that's it works. A ten. That's ten. <laughs> so he's gonna take four damage. He's down to two health. That's one he's health. hurt. Great you you, you huffed him good. He goes. Aah! Fuck, that hurts. Okay. <laughs> so I've still got my uh, my uh, pistol out. I'm going to close the distance between me and him. Okay. Point the gun at his at, at him. It's Nowhere center, specific. So center mass. Center mass this time. <laughs> and go, I'm not going to miss from this range. Drop your weapon. He goes, I can't. They'll kill me anyway. Pull and defies you. Kneecap. Do I even have to roll for that? Yeah. Six plus my clever? Yeah. Nine. You hit him dead. <laughs> yeah, I kneecapped him and killed him? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, what did I hit him <laughs> with a howitzer? No. <laughs> it, it blows no, up you, his femoral artery. No, you, you, you blew his knee out. He, he just goes, ah, fuck. And then you see him bite down. Okay. Uh, and he starts to foam at the mouth. <laughs> Jack, we are leaving. <laughs> it's, so it's John. And, <laughs> he foams in the mouth, starts shaking, and then goes silent. Yeah, we're leaving. This this think about this. This is a guard that was <clears throat> willing to kill himself rather than talk at his own facility. That's indoctrination, if I have ever seen it. Uh, yeah, we are leaving. We are... So, how do we get out? Is there, <coughs> the gate is closed here? It's the, the gate's closed. There's no vehicles. Basically, people get brought in and dropped off, and that's it as so far as you can tell. So, it's a solid door? It's no, it's not a solid door. It's you got a 12-foot fence. Yeah. And it was a, a gate that you basically had to open and physically open. Like It's it's not very technically advanced because it is 1920, so yeah. it's like a fence door that you have on at home on but, like a hinge but like a chain link fence is it locked that was locked and his job was to open it and okay so we could just grab the key off of yeah pretty body. much yeah, the, yeah you don't have to roll for that you're grabbing the key and you're opening it yeah we are leaving. and now you got to figure out how to leave because if you're on foot you're a, a kilometer out of the city okay so i have a if you allow me to roll scouting and i'll give it to this it's not like six feet of snow right now you're at you might have a sprinkle? Foot and a half of foot snow. Half? Okay. Because, I mean, let's be, let's be real. It is Owen Sound, so there's never going to be no snow yeah. in 1920. <laughs> Not in February. All right. So it, I'm could be roll... like, it could be June, and there's probably still a sprinkle in the snow. I'm going to roll <laughs> scouting 
and I'm going to see where we are. Okay. And try and figure out what's the best route to to basically follow in the tracks of the bus so they can't follow our footsteps. Uh, f- six. Okay, because it, it's a low challenge. You, you get that. Okay. You've been able to track it. You know where the, the tracks are. It hasn't been snowing. So the snow is, it's that crisp snow where it holds its form. So it's, but it's not heavy, wet snow that you're going to have trouble walking through. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and solid. Solid, icy snow, but not slippery. So you're going to be able to walk. Decent so to walk. You're through. able to walk back. So you're walking back to town now? Yeah. Yeah, we'll head back to town and we will uh, we'll find a place to stay for the night. As you're going, you hear an alarm go off. Shit, we're running. Go faster. It's that old school, <laughs> like, not, like that old school air raid siren sort of. Yeah, let's all do an air raid impression. And you, you, you hear people moving, but not a lot. Like it's, it's, it is a fairly bare bones facility for, for all intents and purposes. I guess to avoid attention. How many guards? Actually, mm. it was surprising that there was only one guard because they just didn't expect people to leave. Yeah. Actually, or is care. there a place where we can safely, with scouting, yeah, maybe we can find a place to safely hide, observe, let's see what their forces are like. Yeah, uh, hunt, there's a, uh, a hunter's lodge. That, okay. would, that would have been used, but because of the war, people aren't really hunting, so it's empty, essentially. It's like a half-empty motel. You know, you've seen those yeah. those before. It's a hunting lodge with a main building and then, like, a few a few dormitories in it. Okay. So we can try and hide, and I want to see how strong their resistance is. Yeah, let's, let's hoof it up with a higher ground. Yep. Yeah. So we'll go up to the bluffs and see what we can see. Six... Plus scouting seven plus clever nine. Okay, so what you see is it, it's off in the distance, up a little hill a bit, but you can see the hunting lodge. Yeah, and it shouldn't be too difficult terrain to get to. It's enough that you see it because you know the area. And at this point, it's not it's it's winter, so sunset is around six thirty ish p.m. Yeah, so the sun is going down. They're not likely to see you. Okay, good. So you you make your way into the lodge, and you can you go into the the living room, I say, of the lodge, and you you can look out towards the street. It be something, and you're you're smart enough that your tracks aren't being followed. Good. Okay, so you you, you guys are there. You're gonna yeah. unload yeah. or do anything? Okay. I'm gonna have my rifle ready. Okay. <laughs> and basically peek out through the window using my scope. You see some soldiers come out. How many? About 10, 15 or so, best best you can think. <laughs> yeah, but not but, but as shot. far as you can tell, it's pretty much everybody from the facility. Like, it, 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 there couldn't have been much more because you didn't see more. And they're not in vehicles. They're all in, on foot. Hmm. Hmm. The odd thing is, they're all in different uniforms. Any uniforms that we recognize or he recognizes? See, you see German and English. That's strange. No Canadian uniforms. But German, English, French, Italian, and then as well as walking with them, you see pri- like a private regiment. Maybe half of the troops there are in a uniform you don't recognize, and it looks like to be similar to the uh, the guard uniform that was worn. So they're probably just a paramilitary group that to say it could be Mercs that works for them or is part of the part of the Delta group. Hmm. And they're they're all working together trying to search. Huh. We should report this to Mr. English. Absolutely. All right, so let's... Get on the let's two-way radio. Radio it in. Call it in. Mr. English, we're, we're at the facility. We're just outside. We're observing all sorts of soldiers from different countries all working together in this facility. Germans, English, who knows what else. You hear static. Would we know about jamming at this time? I guess that's a thing. I don't know. I'm trying to think. You, what you, you don't, do. you don't just hear static. You hear like a hump. You hear a low buzz. So they're flooding the band, so we can't get through. Well, that complicates things a little bit. At best, we need to get back to the city. We cannot be found here. that what you want to do? 
Because if there's, they, f- there's it, 15 of them. They've sort of, they fanned out. And then what they did was, best you can tell, because you you're, can't really read lips from that distance, mm-hmm. half of the troops went back to the base or went back to the, the facility. And the rest got in vehicles and drove towards Owen Sound. So they have divide and conquered. Mind you, if we go back into the facility, we have half as many guards to deal with. But if they come home, we get caught with our and pants the, down. And the ones that went back to the facility, uh, you noticed that it was all of the people in the Delta uniform. And the rest of the soldiers seem to go to the city. But as they're doing it, you can see them changing into plain clothes. Okay. So if you choose to go back to Owen Sound, you don't know who would be looking for you because they're in plain clothes. But they also didn't see our faces. There's no cameras at this time. True, they would also have been canvassing. But same thing as if you go back to the base, they you've killed anybody that saw you. Yeah. So we're essentially faceless right now. I don't know. What do you think? Because the mission the mission is figure out what's going on. Yeah. All right now all we have is a donut and two donuts. And what we've seen. So and we know some kind of testing. We need more. We should go back into the base. There's fewer of them now. And they don't know who we are. This is true. Plus, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I can do to maybe give us a better chance. Fuck. Are there any lights around the facility? Like any, like oh, like spotlights? That, that, just the standard security lights that... Not security is in like... They're not a spotlight to look at you. That's not the kind of facility. Yeah, just they like didn't want to give that air out. Yeah. It's just the standard lighting of the road so that trucks know where to drive in and, and horse and buggy and whatnot can we get a high vantage point from there no it looks like a very standard government like there wasn't even a guard tower it was a guard a guard booth at the entrance okay it the whole building is one floor very square and blocky like a nonchalant nothing fancy building out of the ordinary basically like a one-story factory okay hmm Think of it like the size of a Costco. All right. That's pretty much... (laughs) Functional. That's a functional It's basically like a Costco, but not as tall. Okay. So, we should head back in. We have more to discover. Yeah. All right. Agreed. So, at least you know you have a hiding place. Yeah. That that wasn't found. So, we'll we'll move in slow as we're not going to attract any more attention and they give us that range i'll have my rifle up so we can go slow and just move methodically as possible get in quiet and uh did they leave the guard's body there yes they haven't touched it that's a little weird hmm i think they take care of their own but i guess not do we see any of the guards outside no it's, they all went back in. It's very quiet again for whatever odd reason. Okay, so well. Let's head back to the building as quietly as we can. Yep. Trying to be sneaky. We're kind of past the point of being nonchalant. We got a rifle out. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. You, you, you <laughs> might want to go with your... Like, no, if you walk in there and they don't know who you are, they're probably going to be asking questions that you don't want to hear. Yeah. So, I'll sling my rifle and uh, I'll have We have, have the advantage of surprise, but not of complete incognito. Yeah, exactly. I'll have my uh, pistol. At the out. Okay, so when you walk in, you're in the main building again. Remember, to the left was the dormitory area, the right was the work area. Does anything seem different? Nothing there. Nothing seems different. It's just that you'd seen, uh, normally you would have seen like muddy boot prints, but because of none of that, you just have uh, where snow is melted from the boots. Mm-hmm. So let's follow the snow. You want to follow the snow? Okay, so you walk in, and at the end of the hall, where on the right hand side is where you found the the donuts and there was the double doors that were going to the back where they, they came they took out the of body you see the trail leading there all right we let's gotta go, go through those doors yep. everything we need to pass those all right let's do it nice and slow you walk in there and you it's another odd hallway it just seems like a building that's very sparse not a lot in it it doesn't make any sense as to what's going on there and you walk in and there's another uh, for, sort of fork in the road where you have a left and right. 
The left side says administration. The right says lunch, like the lunchroom, essentially. Oh, okay. The mess hall. And you see it split as far as the snow goes with more of the snow going towards administration and then a few of it going towards the uh, the mess hall. Uh, but you hear sort of a commotion coming from the mess hall area. Like you hear murmurs and sounds. Let's go check out the mess hall. Let's go to the mess hall. Yeah. Okay, so you walk up into the mess hall and again, the doors doesn't have any, any windows on it, but as you open the door, it's just piles of bodies. That is a mess. We're talking two, <laughs> three hundred bodies, in different different states of decay. That's a wonderful smell. And, and within it, you hear moaning of people that are dying that haven't quite died yet, that were just thrown in the pile. Oh, Lord, all at different forms of decay, different uh, different levels of you know boil looking infection. That's horrifying. Yeah. No. Nope. I didn't sign up for this shit. And like we're talking two, three hundred, so this is a pile of bodies. Yeah, we're just gonna not open that door any further. And uh, Do, is there any sign of the uh, the guard or not the guards of the troops, the the people we were following? Nope, not there. So, best you could guess is they came checked to see if anybody was hiding amongst the bodies, and then went the other way. On one hand, that's a quick place for us to hide should shit go south again. It also explains where all of the other workers have been yeah, going. Yeah, two to three hundred people came up in the last month. Two hundred, three hundred people, well, former people here. But why are they not disposing of the bodies? That's a weird question I want to know. Is there anything else in the room of the bodies? Just a, a big giant chalkboard, and it just says... Experiment B, failure. Hmm. You know what I wish they'd issued us? Some kind of a camera or something. <laughs> but I don't but, think they had portable cameras. I was going to say the cameras were those ones that had the flashes that exploded every time you used it. <sighs> yeah, no, that's not going to help us. You have to sit still for like five minutes. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Um, Remember, the reason I picked World War One as the game is because World War Two has been done to death, but also... There's too much technology that was made for World War II. Like that, radar. And that makes things easier. You know, you know, like like how nowadays, how movies, you can't make a movie uh, where it, like horror movies work anymore because... Cell every, phones. Because the yeah, cell phone solves, much... solves 90% of all movie problems from the 80s. And, and... Oh no, the line's dead. Uh, it's a cell phone. Yeah, yeah whoops. <laughs> Literally. It's going to connect like, to another tower. 99% of movie problems before 1995 could be solved with a cell phone. Yeah. So, almost, not even horror, sitcom too, same thing. Yeah, almost everything. So, anyway. Same deal. I figured World War One was a better setting because you're limited. Yeah, tech is so, so We so do short. have pictures. We do have radio. It's in its infancy though. Okay, so, all okay, right. So there's nothing really valuable here. We should go to the administration place. Yeah, there's we'll go no to the other, administration. There's no other exits or any other? Nothing in there. Nothing you can see beyond the pile of bodies. It just looks like... It's horrifying. Yeah. And it says, you know, experiment B, failure, and below that it just says, to be burned. Okay, so, whatever they... I almost want to get a sample. A sample of a person? Just cut off a hand or something, but... Somebody has a knife. I, I do have a knife. If you're willing to hold, carry it, I'll cut it off. You don't have to do a whole hand. You can do a thumb or a finger. Sick fuck. <laughs> you know just what? Just cut off the head. We'll just go from take, here. <laughs> just take the penis. And he gives, he, and he gives him a what look like, the what? <laughs> the weenus. <laughs> no. We're not looking at diseased cocks. In this. <laughs> I guess we, we honestly... Is there a body close to the door? The closest one is the body of uh, the, the John Doe that ate the donut that you saw. He was just thrown in the front. Yeah, he's the freshest, so maybe we should grab some Yeah, we'll piece break of that. A, Yeah, we'll stomp. We don't want to touch him. I want to stress this enough. We're going to maybe stomp on his hand and just cut off a finger, stab through his finger, put it in a bag. That works. That's gross, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do the stomping and the cutting then. So I do as such. I stomp on his hand reluctantly and cut off part of his finger. 
Yeah, for the love of God, don't touch it. And then gingerly poke it with the knife so I can pick it up and hand it over to Terry over here. Yeah, we'll put it in my, <laughs> the, it's, my bag. I'm having trouble cracking the name. Like, Dodd and Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to go with because you have three different names. Yeah, now. I have notes here for what my own name is. for the. <laughs> I'm like, confused. Private and private. <laughs> We're so, Marley yeah. and Marley. So we will, uh, I'll put it in my, my bag, my hobo bag. <laughs> <laughs> hobo donut and finger bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh, okay is it, we played a world war one game where the most important part was having a, a hobo donut bag <laughs> welcome to role play <laughs> okay so we will go towards the administration okay you're gonna do that yeah so you go towards administration and you walk in and it's where all the filing offices are you know, it's it's like an office like what you figure for a school or an accountant's office and everything is all over the place files are on the ground being torn up it's it, it looks like they're cleaning house they're, they're scrubbing their records uh, i want to go over and read some of the documents see if i can just glance over them quickly okay so uh it's the documents are in multiple languages so you've got some in German, some in French, some in Italian, some in English. So can I roll clever to see if I can find anything of importance, maybe? Sure, go ahead. See if there's a, if there's a rhyme or reason to the filing system. All right, I'm going to challenge rating of... going to go with a six on that. Six. Plus anything? Uh, no, just a no. straight six. So ties go to the defendant. Okay, so... And you... You see it, and a lot of it looks just like accounting numbers. Uh, but you know what? You do see it looks like some parts are written in code on multiple pages in multi all the different languages. There's patterns. There's patterns, but it, it almost looks native in the way the stances are and the way it's written. It may not be from what your tribe understands, but you know it to be native. Okay, so it's a neighboring language, perhaps. Can I roll my clever to maybe see if I can recognize a few phrases or words? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll make, and it's going to be Hard. a challenge rating of two. It's going to be okay. very low. You're going to be able to figure this out, probably. And wouldn't you know it? I got a one, but I got a clever of three, so four. Okay, so, <laughs> so but what, what should have been a botch? You see it, and, and uh, it looks like folk tales. References to folk tales, and they're doing research on it. I'm gonna look at Jack. I'm gonna say, you know, I've read this story before, and it doesn't work out too well for the people involved. It talks about, you know, how a lot of Native American stuff talks about uh, spirit animals and 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 certain things. The nearest you can tell, it's sort of an amalgamation of different different languages different uh different folk tales revolving around what i guess the the, the modern window? the modern term would be shooting stars okay and like basically disaster from above sort of thing okay do, do i recognize in the documents do i recognize the word windigo no, it's it's not uh, the traditional monster. Okay, just I thought uh, the flesh eating. But basically, calamity is sort of the the idea. Apocalyptic. Yes, that 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 sort of idea, but not the apocalypse as in like you know fire and brimstone. Yeah, and, and a great world. cataclysm of, of yeah things. resulting in that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna relay what I found to Jack and say, okay, okay. this is bad news in my languages. We should grab some of these papers and put them in the hobo finger donut bag. Well, we should keep these separate, so we'll grab a file folder. <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get donut and finger get, get, all get over get the je Jelly donut poison on everything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we will uh, grab as many of the files that we can safely carry, throw it in like a satchel, and. Uh, Actually, do we find, like, a bag or anything? Uh, you've got, like, file folders, 
that sort of thing, because okay. they, they threw a, a lot of things around. So they'll have those weird little twine. It things. looks like they grabbed most of their vital research, and then it's, these are the duplicates that were in other languages. So it looks like the, you, you found an English piece, but most of the mm. English stuff is gone because it's more of a universal... The research was being done in Canada, so... The language yeah, yeah being, English primarily. Uh, uh, is there anything that's not documents to, of note in the room? You find... Uh, a early reel-to-reel tape recorder. Grab it, or grab the 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 tape the, out the, of it. The tape out of it, and and not and not early as in like it's not like a room filling thing. It's <laughs> it's a, a reel-to-reel. Let's say it's one of those big tapes, two and a half feet long by whatever. Not the reel-to-reel like the huge reels. More like what you'd have like on a dictation machine now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was always it was a smaller reel, like an eight centimeter. Uh, tape okay. and so I'll grab that and all right. So it, ha- it, ha- it does need power, so it's this is before the days of batteries. <laughs> Should we just like turn it on? Yeah, see let's on see it? what it says. You want to turn it on? Okay, so it... <laughs> the... no, I was gonna say it, it does the does the <laughs> the old RCA <laughs> thing where it kicks in. No, uh, it turns on, and what you're hearing is little ex- excerpts from. Uh, scientists and it's a few different people at different intervals talking so I'm not going to attempt different voices but, <laughs> yeah. but it's different people from uh, different research divisions talking about that leading into the events of what was hap- of what happened at the, the signing accord and the Delta group which owned mining and, and uh, resource gathering uh, companies in Europe, North America, everything, they, being a private corporation, saw had a lot to lose uh, by this war going on and, and being prolonged, and, and whoever won was going to screw everybody over with, with uh, different, uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have different restrictions and embargoes on certain trade agreements and everything. So they they had a lot of money to lose, no matter who won, right now, right? So they were in Russia mining when meteor shower happened. And they thought, oh, great, we can get resources out of the, sometimes there's raw materials. You know, you can get really rare materials like diamonds and that that come out of out of meteors. Iridium, stuff like that, yeah. Yes. But what they found uh, was, and they didn't realize it right away, was a biological. Hmm. So... It was like a spore, like like a like a fungal spore. To metagame, like 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 the Andromeda strain. Similar, or uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but there's the the whatever incident they had in Russia. The the, the, the Tunguska oh, blast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, boom. Very similar. Okay. Uh, and the workers that found it almost immediately went ravenously mad. And they're doing research on it to see if they can if they can end the war and control basically control the outcome with it for profit. Is what you're gleaning from this. Or at least so much of what you can glean. So they're looking to control this spore so to give them kind of a, any sort of advantage. It becomes a super weapon of its own kind. Yeah, so the the notes and everything mixed with the tape, what you can gather is they're looking for ways to control the incubation period of the spores before the biological effects take hold as well as the severity extremity and could it be could you be influenced with it mind control right now it's been an abject failure and anywhere it's deployed just ravages the area making making the people I'm going to say zombies, but not zombies. <laughs> Feral ghouls of, of sorts. You know, fe- basically... Without the undead part. Basically fevered, crazed people that have no rhyme or reason. They'll eat their family. They'll eat any... They're, they're as far as they can tell, out of control of anybody. It's like The Last of Us and the whole Cordyceps thing. Yeah. You're nuts. You're gone. Yeah, like you've, once, you've, once the spores get in, into your lungs, you're done. Or, or in the case of a donut into your belly. I'm going to 
look at Jack, say, well... Let's take this recording. Yep, let's take this. Short of us capturing one of them, it looks like they're willing to kill each other. Is there any other entrances or exits or rooms we haven't been in? Uh, you just see uh, another doorway that just says... Uh, it, it just has... Basically, it says officers... Officers' quarters? Like, it's not really quarters. It's more... It's just officer section. And that would be where... Uh, officer section slash where they have the loading port to get into the, their vehicles. It's basically only officers go through there. The rest of the workers had to go through the front entrance. I'm going to look... Do we have enough information? Partially, yes. Partially, Everything no. else has been sort of devastated. Like, they're... They're cleaning house, and the only reason you got it is it had all... You had duplicates in other languages and the extra, and then they forgot the tape. I am about to say, we almost could blow this place. But then again, we don't know whether that stuff will spread to the air. Well, the, the bodies were uh, labeled for destruction by fire, so that, you know, fire would work. Fire would work, okay, so... Fire cleanses all people. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Why Doesn't need to burn things. What do you think we should do? I think we should get the hell out of here. We got what we came for. You're right. Okay, so you're going to try to escape? Yep, going to so try and get out. Hightail it. You're going to try. Okay. As you're gathering everything, you hear, Where do you think you're going? And you look up, and it's the man with the cigarette in the black suit with two of the Delta Guards. I thought of the bad guy from Indiana Jones. <laughs> That's who I'm the, guy, the guy with he's the, the coat big, hanger. Yeah, he's, this, this guy's wearing like an old 1800s suit sort of thing. <laughs> like, it's out of, it's not a business suit. It's like a rich man's, like he, he goes to a gentleman's club suit sort of thing. Very, very rich. Very rich. Oh, so rich. <laughs> Where do we think we're going? Uh, your fucking face! Um, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna try that? <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're, I don't know. Fuck. It's um, my first day. <laughs> so, you've seen everything that's going on here. What do you think? That's all he says. I think you're insane. He goes, he goes, do you think I'm insane? What we're doing here is trying to stop the spores. He says, "You've killed three hundred people, buddy." And he, then he he says, "He goes. It killed five million on its own in a day on the East Coast because they went mad and ate each other." Well, you know, fireworks problem solved. Time to close up shop. He goes, if only it was that simple, we believe that there's a sentience to the spores. That something controls them and makes the people go mad. What we are trying to find is a way to tap into that and turn off that impulse, that control, that intelligence. And you need to kill people, humans, to do that? Doesn't work on animals? I don't condone this in reality. This is my character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why are you not sharing this information with the governments? We have. Who do you think has been working with us on this? I'm about to ask you, who sent you here? I presume they've got weapons on us. Oh, yeah. Say, so, well, we just no use lying our way out of this, truthfully. <laughs> We're just privates in the army here, and they sent us on some special go-around and sneak-around shit. I just wanted to crack some skulls. I ended up here instead. Does the name Mr. English mean anything to you? Mr. English means absolutely nothing. We're operating under the authority of the Canadian military along with its allies and those in Europe. Like, the the war... Remember, because there's no radio, major radio communication at this point. 
because the war has ended and every government is working together to stop this. Who sent you? He goes, if I may, I'm going to hold my hands up, drop my pistol. Because okay. honestly, I'm not that, I'm not a fucking sharpshooter <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm going to reach into my coat. Pass his hands in the list. Radio. Yeah. Now shut up for a minute. Okay. Hey, Mr. English, we are uh, just about ready to leave here. We got a bunch of stuff. What do you want us to do? You hear nothing but static again. We have some tapes. We've uh, a lot of weird stuff here, sir. Nothing but static. I said, well, I tried to get him to come out of hiding. <laughs> so that's that's all I got. I'm gonna... We've never even seen the guy. Then I'm going to have to say something's not quite right with your mission. Well, how do we know you're telling the truth? Mr. I, Mysterious Man in Black? I'm here talking to you right now. And if you want, we can go talk to anybody you want in the military. Okay, well, want to stop pointing those guns at us first? Because that might be a wonderful way to start this conversation. Because clearly I'm not armed anymore. All right, boys. And he tells them to lower their weapons. Look at Jack. Well, what, what do we have to lose to, but to cooperate at this point? Just wanted to beat someone up. Just, <laughs> let's just go. <laughs> Sorry for killing your guard. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> it was a wolf, I swear. Lead the way. Lead the way. <laughs> Get on with it. Okay. So, so uh, he motions to the guards to let you through, to come to the back so they can go uh, on a vehicle and head out. He hasn't given his name yet. He probably won't because he works for the, for the Delta Corp, um, which may or may not be good or evil at this point that you know of. And as he's walking away, you notice on... Both of the guards and the man in black that they've got a rash forming. Oh shit. Mm. They've been exposed. Mm. <laughs> As they start to sort of twitch and, out. twitch and itch ever so slightly. It's just sort of like that itch you can't scratch. It's just turning the Resident Evil itchy tasty man. <laughs> do not want. And they just as they're walking towards the vehicle to, to radio out, they just stop, sort of dead in their tracks. And the two soldiers look at each other and bang, fire their guns at each other's head almost immediately. They execute each other. Okay. Out, of the, out of the blue. Well, I guess not out of the blue if you saw the thing go a little crazy. <laughs> And the man in black stands there and just, he just starts tapping his hand at the side of his leg. And then just starts howling and screaming. And turns around and, and lunges at you. Say, so you didn't drop your knife. Fucking stab him in the head. So now, I guess we're rolling initiative. Still got your rifle? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if I can. Yeah, I'd say technically I would. It's slung across That's my back. That's a four for me. That's a five. That's an eight. Can't have an eight. Oh, sorry, oh, it's just, five. <laughs> I thought it was out of my... All right, so you and I, I re-roll. Okay. Six. Two. Okay, so it's you, me, then, then Tristan here. So what do you want to do? My guy's lunging at you. I rolled an eight on a D6. <laughs> so, so. I'm awesome. Uh, I'm going to scramble the fuck out of the way so and get behind nice. Jack. Oh, boy. That's what you're using your turn for? Yep. Not okay, the face. Go, okay, right ahead. So I guess I'm going to lunge and... Try to bite the face off of Jack. Oh boy! <laughs> Go get him, Tank. <laughs> I've grown quite attached to my face. <laughs> and let me check my stats on this guy. So he does. He rolls with his bonuses an eight. My defense is nine. Okay, so then no, he does not make the. He goes to rah, not your face and misses. 
I don't know how he misses. He just goes <laughs> and bites the wrong spot. Uh, damn it! Oh, bite does doesn't have very good range. <laughs> That's true. So now it's your turn. It's literally All right, a I'm gonna attack. pull up my knife and I'm gonna try to stab him right in the neck. Uh, oh crap! You roll the one. <laughs> one plus. Yeah, three nothing plus you add one. to it will work. <laughs> so that does not go. You swing and a miss. All right, whose go now? His or our mine? Yours. Okay, I guess now that I've sw- out of the way, I'm going to bring my rifle to bear. Okay. Uh, aim down the iron sights and try and cack him in the head. Or just shoot him. Fuck that. I'm just going to shoot his ass. Yeah, shoot say, him in be the very, cack. Be very careful if you say head because I'll make you roll differently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Plus clever five. No, it does not go. Fuck. So, uh, Man in Black Crazy Man is going to still attack Tristan. Woo! Because he's right there. Who's that? Plus that. Defense is still nine. I does roll to ten, so. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, now we figured out what was going to be the difference between it. Yeah. Yeah, I believe we've agreed to that. Different damage. So he takes a swipe at your chest and scratches you for one damage. Okay, so my current health is down eight. But you also don't know if that makes you infected now. Because we'll have to wait and see. Precisely. Oh, goody. I'm going to try to stab the motherfucker again. Yep. Uh, that's a three plus three plus one. That's seven. No, it doesn't hit. <laughs> Not in this case for that for what that is. All right, my go? Yep. Will you allow me to rapid fire... To give me a bonus to spray and, the area? Yes, yes I will. Okay. So like a plus one? I'll give you actually... How many are you going to fire? I'm going to fire three. I'll give you a plus three on it. All right. Plus 11. Oh, yeah, you hit. <laughs> so... <laughs> so then that... So let's take three damage... I'm going to say he's at half health. Yay! Did my gun jam? No, it did not. Nope. (laughs) It did not. But you got to reload because remember, it's manual loading on that. Yep. So I got to slap in a new clip. Yep. So, yep, that's useless. Um, And I don't have my pistol. Jack, have fun. The The man in black, because he's crazy, is no longer paying attention to you for the moment. He's pulling the bullets out by hand. Quick, he's distracted. Kick his ass. He's, he pulls the bullets out of his own skin, just screaming at the top of his lungs. Ugh. Just <laughs> pulling him out one by one. I'm going to try to drive a knife through his chest. <laughs> just one dice. Four, seven, eight. For this, I'll say you hit, but one damage. <clears throat> I presume I did not pick up my pistol, or did I? You did. You did not. Uh, can I grab one of the rifles from one of the dead guards? Uh, they had pistols. Okay, I'm gonna grab one of their pistols then. Yeah. And I'm gonna try and shoot this motherfucker. Because he's pretty hurt now. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Doesn't hit. What? Motherfucker. Uh. But he's he's hurt. Did, did you boop, hear boop. that? Yeah, I heard some booping. <laughs> what the fuck? It's nothing on my bed. That's weird. I don't know. Deep, deep, deep. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> He's a robot. Quick, kill him. <laughs> just, no, just... Ah. <laughs> so, what he ends up doing is he's still angry, and he just starts clawing at his own chest. And just takes one damage on his own. Okay. That he's gone completely insane. I have an idea... Should we just book it? Say, yeah, fuck this clown. Grab a gun and let's go. Because <laughs> you are near the vehicles. Yeah, I'm going to grab the other guard's pistol just so I have a, an option. And let's just book it to the Is vehicles. he behind the vehicle? You, you were near the carport. Okay. Does the guard have the keys? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, Maybe like, I'd point that out. Like, he literally, the, the one had keys in his hand. Okay. You, you were approaching the building when they started itching. Okay, okay. So I grab the keys for the vehicle, and we dash to the vehicles. 
Yeah, we'll go. Okay, so you get in your vehicle. Going to try radioing Mr. English again. Radio, radio at this point. You didn't bring that with you. Oh, right, shit. Because yeah, he, he, he dropped it. He's like, come with us. Leave it. Fair enough. Makes so, sense. So you're getting in the vehicle. You start to drive off with all of your evidence in hand. And forbidden knowledge <laughs> <laughs> of what's going on. And you've got to a lot to think about as far as who is who's doing the what truth? who's telling yeah who's telling the truth what's the nature of, of your your mission what's the nature of the war the, you know you've got conflicting evidence one person says the war isn't even happening anymore and it's it's basically a cover for for the survival of the race and then you've got one side saying no the war is happening and these people are lying and these 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 people are you know doing something this to uh, screw up the war and like you were sent in to do that and all your you know you received your mission in a Canadian army base so there's no reason to believe that you know Mr. English is wrong but then he wasn't there when you called him yeah and he also didn't have a rank yeah mm. that struck me as really fucking there is a lot to be questioned at the same time you've got a sack full <laughs> a sack full of donuts, and a, hobo, a hobo sack full of jelly donut of of spored jelly donuts, uh, as well as uh, fingers <laughs> and whatever other uh, random evidence that you have uh, in a truck <laughs> with uh, a compatriot that may or may not be infected now that he's got a scratch, uh, may or may not have the spore infection, uh -oh. and you're driving into a town that may be full of. Collaborators, for all we know. Collaborators, for all you know. Well, we know some of them drove into that city. We just don't know where they are. And that's where we're going to end the game. Woo! Interesting. We may pick this up later another time, but that is it for the the baby's first RPG. Adventure 1 of World War 1. I like Warring it. The Warring 20s. The Warring 20s. We will talk about this more in our debrief. So for the Cambridge Chronicles, we have been Mike the Birdman Dodd from thisweekgeek.net, joined with... Mr. Christopher, the one and only. Our War Master. Alex. And we'll be back, guys, right here on the debrief, only on the Cambridge Chronicles. <laughs>